So I recently visited Arches National Park in Utah and I was blown away by the beauty. So in today's Lightroom color grading tutorial, I'll be showing you how you can create this beautiful desert rich tone look in your photos just using Lightroom Classic. And I'm gonna start right now. Right guys, so the very first thing you want to do is go ahead and choose a photo that you'd like to add this red desert tone look. Now I recently visited the US and I visited seven national parks across Utah, Idaho and also Wyoming. And I'm creating this mini series really on how I've edited those photos. And in this episode, we're focusing on Arches National Park. Now Arches National Park, firstly it's famous for its arches, but it's made out of red sandstone, which is quite unique to the area. So if you've visited anywhere around there, Canyonland, arches or pretty much anywhere in Utah, then this is the video you should watch. So we've got this photo here, which is the photo I'm working on today. And it was shot within Arches National Park at the windows. So we've got the north window here, we've got the south window here, and the composition lines up with turret arch, which you can see in the far distance. Right, so once you've opened up Lightroom Classic and you're happy with the photo you're gonna choose, go over to the develop panel and we're gonna open up the basics panel first. Now the first thing I like doing, especially with landscape photos is going to your profile here going from Adobe color I'm just going to go over to Adobe landscape and you can change it depending on if you're only doing an engagement shoot or wedding shoot you can change it to portrait or you can change it to Adobe vivid experiment really and see what works for you I specifically like working on landscape photos in Adobe landscape so the next thing we're going to do is go to our white balance now we're going to manually change this because I like manipulating it in post this was shot near sunset so that's the kind of colors we really want to be over emphasizing so we're with our temperature here, I'm gonna go from 5600, which is what I originally shot in camera. I'm gonna jump all the way up 1000 Kelvin to 6500. And I'm gonna keep the tint the same because I think that's correct for this photo. Then, as you can see, the photo is quite dark. I did shoot for the sky, which means that the shadows here are quite strong. So we're gonna fix that by going to our exposure here. So what we're gonna do is go to my exposure and I'm gonna increase that by one entire stop. Now, the highlights are a little bit blown out, so that's something we need to fix it next, basically. So we're gonna go to our highlights here and I'm gonna bring the highlights down, bringing basically affecting this part of our histogram, which is our highlights and whites. So we're gonna bring that down to around about minus 50, I think in this particular case, but it may be different for your photo. Then we're gonna to go to the shadows here and we're gonna increase those by around about 60. 50, 60 works quite nicely. Again, really bringing up that information. Again, we've got a lovely amount of dynamic range in the photo, so we want to actually use that within our image and within our edit. Now, I, for the whites and highlights, because it looks a little bit gray over here, I'm gonna to go to the white and I'm gonna increase that We'll bump that up by 10 and it's the same situation for the blacks so I'm going to take a little bit out by going minus 10 what that will do is it will just fix a little bit of those highlights and blacks and it'll bring that true color back because what can sometimes happen if you go too extreme with your highlights and shadows it can make the photo look a little bit matty or a little bit gray so you can clip the edges just by dropping basically minus 10 or plus 10 to the whites and blacks, just prevent that from happening. So next we want to go to our texture, clarity and dehaze. Now with texture, because there's a lot of texture in the rocks, we wanna bring that up by a small amount. So we'd go for 10 there. Now with clarity, I actually like reducing clarity when it comes to sunset photos, but not by much, just by a small amount. So we're gonna do is minus 10 there. And then the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to haze. Now there's a little bit of haze you can see in the far corner, so we don't need to make a massive change here so I'm just literally going to go for plus 10 there little changes here and there will make a big difference in the overall outcome right so as you can see just with the basics panel we've gone from before to after and already there's made a big change but we really want to manipulate those colors again that red sandstone is quite unique to Utah specifically so we really want to emphasize those colors in post-production and we can do that by using the HSL or hue saturation and luminance sliders so we're going to go out of the basics panel, we're going to jump all the way down to where you can see it says HSL color. So firstly, we're going to go ahead and affect the hues first. Now we want to affect the reds, so we're going to go to our reds here and we're going to go for minus 
20. What that'll do is it'll bring a little bit more purple back into those reds because they're a little bit orange at the moment. So bring that back to more of a reddish hue by adding in purple. And we're going to do the same with orange. We're going to bring a bit more red. We're going to go for minus 10 there. Now with the yellows, yellow will specifically affect that shrubbery that we can see. I went in May, so there was a lot of green. It rained a little bit, so there was a little bit of green in those shrubberies. So we're going to want to emphasize that. So we'll go to the yellows here and we'll increase that by 20. Now what we're going to do is we're going to leave green and aqua because there's not much green and aqua within the photo apart from the sky, which we will be changing later on. So we're going to jump straight to the blue here and we'll go for minus 25. That'll make the sky a little bit more teal and it'll match up with that sunset look that we're going for. And also it will work quite nice with the red sandstone that we're making here. So that's all we're going to need to do. We don't need to make major changes in the hue. So what we're going to do is jump over to saturation. Now saturation, if you don't know, controls how much color is in with each color band, aka the saturation of each hue. So what we're going to do is go to the red first. We're going to skip that out. We're going to go straight to the orange because what happens if you you can add a little bit. I might add in 10%, but sometimes it can make it a little bit too strong. So we don't want to necessarily do that. We don't want it to look like color puke at all. So small changes can make a big difference to your overall outcome. Okay, so what we're gonna do is gonna go to the oranges next. And what we're actually going to do is we're gonna increase those by 25. Now oranges in this specific case is actually affecting where the sun is hitting the rocks. As you can see, just the edge here. And also there's a little bit of orange here. So it's really bringing up that saturation. And we're gonna slightly change the brightness of that later on when we go into luminosity. Then in saturation, because the sky is looking quite weak, we're gonna go all the way down to the blue and what we're gonna do is actually increase that by the largest amount in this video. We're gonna to go to plus 50. They don't usually go that strong, but there just wasn't a lot of punchiness in that blue that you can see there. And that's all we need to do in saturation. If you like, you can also increase the yellows slightly. I'll probably increase those by 10. So just increase the shrubbery brightness and shrubbery saturation. But to be honest with you, that's it doesn't make a massive difference to the photo. There isn't a lot of green in this image. So let's jump over to luminosity. Now luminosity is the brightness of those specific hues. So as you can see, HSL controls basically all of the colors. The type of color, the saturation of that color, and also the brightness of that color. It's a really powerful tool. If you'd like to learn more, I've actually got a masterclass video going over this specific tool within Photoshop. Really handy, highly recommend watching it. Okay, so let's go to the luminance. What we're gonna do is we'll change quite a lot here. So we're gonna go to the red. We're gonna increase that by 40. So we're brightening up those uh, sandstones that you can see. Then we're gonna go to the oranges. We're gonna increase those by 15. So that's specifically targeting the bright parts that you can see where the sun is hitting the rocks. Then what we're going to go to the yellow, we're going to darken the shrubbery by minus 20. Again, as you can see, not made a massive difference, but it's made it a little bit more green. So if I just show you, if I do zero, and then if I just go minus 20, you can see it just takes out a little bit of that brightness where the sun is really hitting that green. But we know you don't want to make it too contrasty. So a nice matte look there, I think looks quite nice. Then what we're gonna do is go all the way down. We're gonna to go to the blue here and we're gonna drop that down by minus 30. Again, that's specifically targeting just the sky and it makes this sky look a little bit darker and adds a little bit more to that gradient where you can see sunsets just off in the distance. So it adds a nice gradient to that. But again, we are gonna be creating a mask of that sky and kind of manipulating a little bit further because there's still a little bit of purple which I'm not too happy about. Okay, so let's turn out for HSL. So we're happy with that. Let's jump down to color grading. Now again, color grading is a really handy tool when you want to manipulate the colors in your photos. A bit like split toning in the previous version of Lightroom Classic, basically color grading adds the mid-tones to it. So you can affect the highlight colors, the mid-tone colors, and the shadow colors. We're only affecting two today but you can affect all three if you like. So if you wanna go into the actual specific ones, you've got the shadows here that you can manipulate, you've got the mid-tones, and you've also got the highlights. Let's go to the highlights first. So firstly, you've got the color wheel. So you can also use the slider here that you can see affects the color wheel. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna choose a hue of 25, which is like an orangey red. Then you've got the saturation. Now saturation is just basically how much overlay you want. I wanna go for a nice warm tone. So I'm actually gonna go quite strong in this particular case, probably go for around 20 but if you're finding it too strong or not strong enough you can basically change the saturation again that's how much overlay color you're applying to that image within the highlight area specifically then we're going to go to the mid-tones here we're going to go for a slightly more yellowy color so i'm probably going to go for around 35 hue you can see roughly what that color is if you look at that color wheel you can also if you want to click on this little square and this you can choose a custom color which is also really handy but we're not going to be going into that in this tutorial and then we've got a saturation here we're going to increase that let's 
let's see. Oh, I quite like that color coming in. So I think we're going to go for around 30 in this particular case. And then what I'm going to do is just going to go to the luminance here. I'm going to bright that up by around 15%. Then with the blending here, I'm gonna increase that all the way to around 75. Now, if you do wanna know more about the color grading panel, because it's incredibly helpful when you really wanna change and manipulate colors, go ahead and watch this masterclass tutorial, which I go really in depth. I've made masterclass tutorials basically on every single panel. So if you really wanna know about Lightroom Classic, go ahead and watch that playlist that I'll place in the link in the description. Okay, so that's all I'm gonna do in this particular case. So I'm just gonna go ahead and turn off color grading. If you want to, you can sometimes add some colors in the shadows, but I don't really want to manipulate the shadows in this particular case, so I'm not going to uh, not going to do that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go to the details. Now, details controls your sharpening, but also noise reduction. Now, I actually shot this at ISO 800 on my Canon EOS R5. So if you zoom in, there's a little bit of grain, but it's not actually that bad. So what I'm going to do is just going to do the, what I basically do is the, do my luminance denoise, which I'm going to turn to 25 and leave everything else the same. So that's 50 details, zero contrast. And for color noise reduction, 25. Detail noise reduction is 50. And then also smoothness at 50. But this is basically the basics. They've also got denoise, which is a new AI. I'm not going to do it in this particular case because it sometimes can take quite long. And for sharpening, just going to leave what it does in Lightroom Classic. So 40, the amount, radius of one, details of 25 and masking of zero. And as you can see, if I do the before, and after, it just removes any of that kind of ISO noise that you could see in the shadows because we have brought a lot of that information up again. Okay, so as you can see, the photo is already looking really nice. So I'm gonna turn off the details panel. What we'll do is go down to lens correction. So we're gonna go to the profile here. I shot on, as you can see, my Canon EOS R5 with my RF 15 to 35 mil f2.8. So make sure if you ever work in Lightroom Classic, always recommend remove chromatic aberration turn on as well as enable profile corrections. This will fix any optical problems that your lens has. Make sure that's always turned on. And of course, if you'd like to manually change that, you can also change the distortion here as well as your defringe, which is chromatic aberration. And you can also go into your vignetting correction. But to be honest with you, if you, your camera is fairly modern, your profile corrections should be there. Okay, so let's turn that off. And then what we could do is the last thing we do is go down to our calibration. Now calibration is an incredibly helpful tool. I must say it's by far my favorite tool within Lightroom Classic. Now we're only gonna do a very small change in this particular example. So we're just gonna go to our saturation here, increase the saturation red primary of five, saturation of the green primary by five, and the last one we're just gonna leave blank. So the blue primary, we don't wanna add any more saturation to the blues. Okay, so as you can see already, the photo is looking really good. There's only two more things that I wanna do. I wanna change the crop, and then I wanna add some masking, because I really wanna manipulate and really add a more sunset feel to it. But as you can see, I am really happy with the overall photo. So I'm just gonna go for a different crop. So I'm gonna go for my cropping panel here. What I'm gonna do is go to my original aspect ratio, and I'm actually gonna drop that down to 16 by nine. I quite like this crop for this specific image. So I'm gonna go ahead and click enter. So I'm just cutting a little bit off the top and a little bit off the bottom because I just quite like this semi panoramic look that this image is, I think, asking for really. The next thing I'm gonna do is go over to masking. Now masking is really helpful in this particular case because there's a lot of purple in that sky that I'm not quite liking. So what we can do is go to our new masks Instead of selecting it manually, I can actually just click this little button here, which is the sky. And what hopefully what it will do is it will cut out the sky. And as you can see, it's actually done a really good job. I love the new AI masking in Lightroom Classic. So to fix that purpliness, what I'm gonna do is go to our temperature and tint. I'm gonna go to my temperature tier, and I'm gonna do is drop that down by minus 15. And then I'm gonna go to my tint, and I'll drop that down by minus 30. What that will do is it will make the sky look a little bit more teal, but it will also remove any of that kind of purple that you could see within the sky. Now, it does a really good job, but sometimes it can create some little cutouts, so you might have to manually change some of it if you need to. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna create a new mask. I'm gonna drop down to radial gradient, and I'm gonna overemphasize some of that kind of fadiness that you could see coming over in near where the sky is. So I'm gonna click, drag, and I'm gonna create a large circle, something around this size. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my exposure here. I'm gonna bring up the exposure slightly by 0.75%. I'm also gonna bring up the brightness of the highlights slightly by 15%. I'm gonna bring down those shadows as well 
by about minus 15. But what I'm also going to do is add in some warmth. So I'm going to go to the temperature here and I'm going to increase that by 25%. Now, what I don't want is it to bleed over the edge. So a really quick tip is you can go to your mask two, click on the three icon here, drop down to intersect mask, and then you want to go to brush. So what you can do is actually remove it from areas you don't want it to. So what you want to do firstly is go to invert. So we don't want, we want to remove it from the subject, not add to it. Make a big brush and then just simply remove it from any of the areas you don't want it to. So I'm going to remove it from kind of the shadow area of this archway here. So we don't want it to affect the edges. We just want it to affect kind of kind of where turret arches you can see in the background there. And I also want to add a little bit more glow to the overall edge of that kind of arch that you can see. So really emphasize that. Now you can actually see how it's affecting by looking at the green overlay. You can see I need to remove a little bit more up here, a little bit more, again, looking at that, moving it, it's quite handy. Just highlights where you've basically made a mistake really. So as you can see, we've got that green coming in and it kind of creates this nice kind of bleed of light, which I think looks really, really nice. Now that's worked very, very well, but I want to kind of do the opposite in the far corner to really emphasize that part. So again, a really quick tip, go into your masks. We're going to go to linear gradient. I'm going to create a real quick gradient just about here. So bleeding in from the bottom and I'm just going to take down the exposure just so basically what it will do is you can use um, these masks to emphasize and de-emphasize parts of the photo. So again, we really want to draw attention to turret arch through the window. So we don't want the rest of the photo to be too bright and kind of basically you just want to really lead the viewer to where you want the viewer to look. So I'm going to darken this section here to overemphasize the right hand side of the photo, which I think is where it is working. So as you can see, basically done. So as you can see, we didn't do much to this photo and already it's made the photo really, really good. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the crop slightly. So I'm going to show a little bit more sky, balance it a little bit more. And I think I am done. So what I can do is now show you the before, as you can see, quite dark, and the after. And then the last thing I would do is I'd open it up into Photoshop. I'd use the new generative fill in Photoshop Beta to basically remove these people. I would do it in Lightroom, but the problem is with Lightroom Classic is sometimes the kind of healing tool doesn't work very well. I personally don't recommend using it. I recommend once you've finished with all the color grading in Lightroom Classic, jump over to Photoshop and basically either use Content Aware or the new generative fill to remove it. It works so much better. But yeah, highly recommend doing this to your photos, especially if you shot in arches or pretty much anywhere in Utah or anywhere where there's red sandstone. I really think using what I've done today and showed you what I can do, really bring out those colors and make it look like sunset. And I must say, I love this color grading effect and highly recommend doing it to your photos. So here is the before and here is the after. And if this particular effect worked for you, make sure to write it down in the comments below.